The story of the French dynasty that will ascend to the throne of St. Stephen of Hungary begins with their ascension to the Kingdom of Sicily, which they took over from a German dynasty. Holy Roman Emperor Friedrich II von Hohenstaufen, King of Sicily, grandson of Friedrich I Barbarossa, died in 1250. His reign was marked by ongoing conflicts between the Emperor and the Papacy and their supporters, the Ghibellines and the Guelphs. The conflict centered around the disputed imperial succession, the government over the communes, that is to say towns of Italy, and matters of papal temporal authority. Upon the death of Friedrich II, his son Conrad IV and illegitimate son Manfred fought for his inheritance, while also continuing to fight against the Pope. At the same time, the papacy was formally trying to offer the crown of Sicily which the Pope believed was his to give, to someone else. The situation changed when Conrad IV died in 1254. His son Conradin took up his father's claims, which, as time went on, were considered to be less legitimate than his father's. Then in 1263, the very ambitious Charles Capet, Count of Anjou, Maine and Provence, finally manages to convince his older brother, King Louis IX the Holy of France, to support him. He accepts Pope Urban IV's offer of Sicily, with the catch that Charles would have to restore it to himself by force, fighting off both Manfred and Conradin, which he does by the end of 1268. Then in 1270, Charles manages to sell his brother Louis IX on a crazy idea, the Eighth Crusade. Louis IX had vowed to recapture Jerusalem, which, long story short, the Crusaders lost in 1244. Again, and Louis and Charles went on crusade once before, to Egypt, with unsuccessful results. But somehow, Charles manages to convince Louis to change targets, from the Holy Land to Tunis, which was conveniently located just south of Sicily. And it was an utter catastrophe, leading to the Crusader army suffering disease and dysentery under the walls of Tunis, Louis IX even dying from the same during the siege. The Crusaders decided to withdraw before Prince Edward of England arrived with his army, which, after seeing that the French were withdrawing, continued on to the Holy Land. But there he was unable to do much. This was effectively the last of the Crusades. Charles's next project was aimed against the territories of the collapsing Latin Roman Empire, and a race for territory against the restored Byzantine Empire under the Paleologos dynasty. Long story short, after the Fourth Crusade, the Byzantine Empire was divided between the nobility of the Crusading armies and the Republic of Venice, which now dominated trade in the Eastern Mediterranean. The Crusaders elected a Latin emperor amongst themselves, but soon began to fight amongst themselves and against the Byzantine remnants, most notably the Empire of Nicaea, out of which Emperor Michael VIII Paulologos, after taking over, recaptured Constantinople and restored Byzantium in 1261. Into this whole mess comes King Charles I of Sicily, in 1272, he lands in Albania, and after gathering some support of the local lords, is proclaimed King of Albania. Pope Gregory X starts to use the threat of supporting Charles in the Balkans to make Michael VIII agree to a union of the churches, ending the schism of 1054, which he promised to do at the Council of Lyon in 1274. Though that does not stop Charles from attacking in the Peloponnese and subjugating Prince William II of Ikea, and then inheriting his land and title after William dies in 1278. The church union came to no avail, with Michael VIII refusing to actually go through with the doctrinal changes due to their unpopularity within his realm. And in 1281, Pope Martin IV allows Charles to attack Byzantium to restore the Latin Empire. But Michael VIII had an ace up his sleeve. For a few years now, Michael VIII and Pedro III of Aragon 
had been plotting to take the island of Sicily away from Charles. Pedro I had a claim through his wife, who was the daughter of Charles's predecessor, Manfred. And under the guise of building a crusader fleet, Pedro I had been using Byzantine money to build ships for an invasion of Sicily. What played even more into their hands was that Charles's internal policy had heavily disregarded the Sicilians, imposing heavy taxes on them and favoring his own French and Provençal nobility and clergy to administer his lands. All these wars cost a lot of money and Sicily was an incredibly valuable possession. On the 30th of March, 1282, the rebellion known as the Sicilian Vespers broke out and within weeks took control of Sicily, massacring thousands of French in the process. Soon came the Aragonese invasion, and the Sicilians, being left with little to no choice, recognized Pedro III as their new overlord. With this, Michael VIII had redirected Charles' attention to a war with Aragon, and at the same time, severely weakened him. Charles I of Sicily died on the 7th of January, 1285. His son Charles II would later end the war with Aragon by agreeing to separate the Kingdom of Sicily into the Kingdom of Sicily and the Kingdom of Naples, while the rest of Charles I's empire would soon be reduced to insignificance in the chaotic Balkans. But Charles I managed something that would be the greatest success of his family, the marriage of his son, Charles II, to Mary Arpad, daughter of Stephen V of Hungary. This granted his grandson, Charles Martel, and his great-grandson, Charles Robert, a claim to the throne of Hungary. And on one day, at the end of the 13th century, several members of the Croatian and Hungarian nobility would come from across the Adriatic and offer to campaign to hand the crown of the realm of St. Stephen to Charles Robert d'Anjou.